personally myself do not expect to see 2,200 people in Japan. You know, I think that's normally a tournament that's around 1,000 people, maybe maybe 1,200. But 2,200 people there is a lot. And I think that this kind of attendance numbers is going to start being the norm. Well, yeah, I, we, we know um, Christian Calcano went over. I don't know if other Americans went over, but... Yeah, you generally get you generally break a thousand there, but I don't think they, they don't break two thousand regularly. Yeah, and they're um, twenty two hundred this weekend, which is fantastic. Yeah. So fantastic for the growth of the game. But moving to our to our feature match here, we see recent Pro Tour top four competitor Eric Frolick on the right. He is playing Jun this weekend and taking a look at this deck list, this is very, very reminiscent to Reed Duke's deck list from Quebec. He's got two Arbor Elves, fourth Ragtos, four Hot Master, three Olivia Valdera, and he's got three copies of Bonfire. With the fourth one in the sideboard, three copies of Tragic Slip, three copies of Liliana of the Veil, a handful of Farseeks, two Garrick Primal Hunter, a Mizium Mortars, a Dreadbore, a couple copies of Rakdos Return, Abrupt Decay, and one Murder. And he is playing against Thomas Johnson, who's playing Naya Blitz, mm -hmm. a deck that we've discussed thoroughly. Um, standard list. He's playing um, two Giant Growth and one Rancor, and two Searing Spear and one Boros Charm. So, he uh, kind of hedged a little bit to get a little more variety in there, but other than that, his deck's pretty straightforward. Um, the typical one drops, the Flint of Bear, he's got the Mayor, Lightning Mauler, and uh, Burning Tree Emissary, so um, he's not a mulligan here, so we'll see, uh, and he's also on the draw, so Eric, uh, things are starting off pretty well for Eric right now, um, but again, this is gonna be one of those things where once Thomas is on the play, is Eric going to be able to keep up with those aggressive one drops? So we do see Eric is going to be on the play here, and he has kept his seven. As Thomas is taking a mulligan here, it's going to be pretty important for Thomas to you know start off with a one drop and just get things underway. We'll see if Eric does have a far seek, which is obviously an important card in this match as well, to just play his cards that are huge backbreakers like Huntmaster the Fells and Thraktos ahead of schedule. And you know the thing about the Jun deck, you know it it is a good it is a deck that is very good against creature decks, but it does have some bad draws in it. Uh, against these creature decks, like a Rakdos return, um, and some of its removal, you know, has to be on time. You know, Tragic Slip can be good, it can also be very bad as well. Um, and a card like Garrett Primal Hunter isn't especially good against the aggressive strategies out there. Uh, is it just a five mana three three uh, for all intents and purposes? So he's going to have to draw the quote unquote good half of his deck in this game one, as we do see an overgrown uh, tomb it looks here. Looks like an Arbor Elf, so he certainly has what he needs. So yeah, he's off to a good start here. He's going to have Acceleration, Overgrown Tomb being a land that he can't untap as well. We're going to see a Temple Garden here from Thomas, and there's, and a, there's champion. a champion. So there's uh, both decks have the type of stars that they were hoping for. Now you see in Eric's hand, he does have a Liliana the Veil, and that's what he's going to cast. Wow. And he's going to take care of that Champion of the Parish right now. So you're seeing that 5th and 6th Farseek really do work here. <laughs> And you see how it is, you know, it, it, they do say, Reed and Owen, they basically said it is a 5th and 6th far, Farseek, excuse me, but you see the differences between the two cards as well. Farseek does not allow for a turn to Liliana the Veil, where this card does, an Arbor Elf. Now you're Tree see. Emissary. Yeah. So, uh, you know, gives Thomas a little play here, but between the, um, the Arbor Elf and the Liliana, Eric might have bought himself enough time for Thraktus to come down to sort of help uh, control this board state. You do see Thraktus in Eric's hand. You also see the Stomping Grounds that he's thumbed forward. He is going to be discarding here with Liliana. Going to attack Thomas's hand a little bit here. And I'm not quite sure what he did discard. It is a Stomping Ground. Okay. And now... Farseek, I believe. If I'm yep. correct. Yeah. Eric yep. is going to play Farseek here. And I don't think he has another play, but again... You know, uh, next turn, he's going to be, uh, get, he'll get a Thrag Tusk in play. Um, Thomas will be able to kill the Liana this turn. Um, but will Thrag Tusk be enough? We'll see. And you've already seen the kind of damage that Liliana can do over the course of a game. You know, it doesn't seem like it's that great, but it, d it did take care of a creature. It's going to take care, it already taken care of a card from Thomas's hand. And now, you know, it's something that he actually does have to attack. You probably see the emissary go there, and then the boar go straight to Eric, most likely. Sacred Foundry gonna come into play, untapped here really for need Thomas. A front medic. And frontline medic, and it there is. There you go. Okay, so that's that's one way Thomas can deal with the Thraktus, or at least ignore the Thraktus. Um, you see, Eric does take a draw, kind of you know, drawing his card in, with miracle in mind. You guys do see frontline medic there. 
and it looks like we switched over to a different match. There we and go. There we go. <laughs> and, so and there's an attack. So you see frontline medic come across, and the guy's battalion is activated. So the guys are indestructible. Eric does just chump block with the Thrag Tusk and does just pass the turn back. So Frontline Medic is making the attacks look very, very easy. Now it's just up for Eric to be able to deal with that thing, and then he should be good to go. Yeah, I mean, the good thing is that uh, Thomas didn't really draw anything else um, to further press his advantage. So, yeah, if Eric draws anything, he's able to attack. And now, so, yeah, this is pretty much the ideal uh, scenario. And I think Eric even has a tragic slip. So he'll be able to deal with the medic uh, in this combat phase. Yeah, what you might see here is front is Arborell jumping away. Yeah, but jumping and away, untapping on the overgrown tomb, and then uh, tragic slipping out frontline medic. Yeah, which is great because Eric will only end up taking uh, three from this attack, going to twenty, and then Thomas basically has you know no creatures left on board other than like a two two and a three three. So we see a sun petal grove, and now we see. Is that the uh, Fire Fist Striker? That is the Fire Fist Striker, the card that Patrick Sullivan enjoys, which is not much of a surprise to me. Oh. And now we see a Miracle Bonfire to the Damned here. So long, Frontline Medic. So now Thomas is going to have to decide if he wants to sacrifice that Frontline Medic or let everything go away, which means he's probably going to uh, want to sacrifice that Frontline Medic. Unless he has a Brawl's Charm, I think. That's which true, which he has one of. Pretty good right now. Yep. But choose the sack. Okay, all right. So Medic is going to sacrifice. Which would be uh, interesting to see now. Eric just swings in. I remember that Eric does have that tragic slip in his hand, which is live right now. Yeah, so he's got the live tragic slip. So, yeah, Eric's in really good shape right here. I'm not sure. Um, again, Thomas's deck is not the type of deck where you can... Uh, oh, so it looks like he does have a burst turn. Okay. Um, but again, uh, Eric does have a tragic slip, so he can save one of his frag tusks and trade with a flint hoop core and get a token anyway. So, still in really good shape. Yeah. As good as that Boros Charm has the potential to be, the tragic slip does kind of break it up a little bit. That that th that thrag tusk, excuse me, is going to bite the dust. So Eric will get a beast token. And Jerry Thompson is going to mock a beast right now. But if you're Thomas right now, you're, you've got. Two two power creatures. You're looking at a beast token, and you know this is a situation of the Naya Blitz. The this is the situation of the Naya Blitz that doesn't want to be in. It's yeah. behind at this point. It doesn't really do a fantastic job of catching up. And Eric has a five power guy and a three power guy, and they are coming across. Yeah, and this is basically you know, if the Naya Blitz deck is on the draw, plus your opponent does have an Arbor Elf or a Far Seek to sort of help them speed up a little bit. That's exactly what the Naya Blitz player is afraid of. They're just afraid of getting into a position where all your opponent's creatures are bigger than yours. They have removal spells. Um, suddenly, you know, there's just there's just nothing that Thomas can really do realistically to sort of get himself out of this. And so what we see here is a double block here from Thomas on the Thrag Tush, giant growth from the Burning Tree Emissary. The Thrag Tush is going to bite the dust, but again, Eric is going to get a 3 3 token. And, you know, these double blocks and these uses of the giant growth is. As helpful as they may or may not be, again, this is just shows how good of a card Thraktusk is, but we already know how great Thraktusk is. So. Yeah, especially if you draw two. Yeah. Um, I think Thomas had a chance maybe if, uh, you know, if Eric didn't get a second Thraktusk, you know, maybe Frontline Medic would have kept pushing through. Sure. Um, but again, once you get to that turn five, six range and you haven't put enough pressure on to burn him out with the Seeing Spears and Boris Charms, or like a, a one all-out attack, uh, you know, there's not much the Nihilus can do. So... We'll see here on the play. Um, he's got Thalia's. Um, he's got Boros Charms that he can bring in. Um, he's probably going to take out the Giant Growth. Um, I don't know how good Fire Fist Striker is. Yeah, I mean, Fire Fist Striker doesn't seem the best to be the best card. He does have four cops that in his deck list. Um, it, it seems like it's okay. I mean, he probably just wants Thalia instead here, probably. Uh, yeah. I would assume, right? I mean, I'd really... I really want to be able to turn off Farseek on turn two. Yeah, especially on the play, you know. Yeah. Thalia's a card that is, you know, obviously exquisite on the play, especially on turn two, and one that's not as great on the draw. You know, it has situations where it can be okay, but again, Eric's deck is a healthy mix of spells and creatures. So it, it's not the end-all be-all. It's not a card that stops Thragtusk or, um, excuse me, Huntmaster the Fells from coming online. Yeah. So 
Uh, taking a look at Eric's sideboard here, he is up a game against Thomas, and he does have plenty of cards that he can sideboard out. Cards like Rakdos Return can certainly go. Uh, a card like Garrett Primal Hunter can certainly go. He wants to lower his curve and interact as fast as he possibly can. Cards that he can do that with in his sideboard. He has two copies of Pillar of Flame. He has a fourth Tragic Slip in his sideboard, and he does have an additional Bonfire of the Damned. The other cards that he does have in his sideboard that aren't great here, but in case you guys do want to know at home, two copies of Graph Figures Cage, a Staffin' In, uh, one copy of Acidic Slime, two copies of Underworld Connections, two copies of Slaughter Games, an additional Rackdown Return, and two Duress. So we're going to see four cards come in here, and two Pillar of Flames, a Tragic Slip, and probably that fourth Bonfire of the Damned, and four cards swap out pretty easily, and two copies of Rackdown Return, and two copies of Garrick Primal Hunter, and then his deck is just a lot better for this matchup. Yeah. But it seems like he's kind of tuned his deck a little bit to be a little bit better in this matchup game one. He's got a lot of removal. He doesn't have a lot of elements that are very good against the control decks. And now his deck is just going to be a lot more streamlined. So he doesn't have the opportunity to draw those four cards in Raptor's Return and Garrett Primal. Yeah, but uh, again, you know, if he doesn't have an Arbor Elf on turn one, the game's completely different. Yeah. So it just goes to show you how important the ramp is yeah. in this deck. Um, interesting to see how it, how it changes on the play. Uh, with Thomas on the play now because you know if Eric's even if Eric's on the draw I'm not sure how great the the Arbor Elf is there because uh, um, he could still will still ha he'd still end up having a champion of the character to play but um, and he would have been able to go turn one champion turn two emissary flint of four so again it's you know being on the play is so important for that Nihilus deck which I think if maybe you test it a lot maybe that's one of the things that's making people a little apprehensive. They're like, I don't want to have to win the die roll all day. Yeah. You know? Uh, but we'll see how Thomas, um, what Thomas can do in game two here. Yeah, you can definitely just see in that particular game as you stated, the die roll is super, super important. So it's a wildly different game, A, if Eric doesn't have that Arbor Elf, but B, if, if Thomas is just on the play that game. You know, yeah, two very huge situations. You know, being on the play with an Arbor Elf, Eric's effectively like two turns ahead of Thomas. Yeah. Um, you know? Uh, so... It's just, it's too much to overcome for a deck like Nihilus when you're dealing with, uh, a, playing against a deck like Jun with that many uh, powerful cards. And now we do see Thomas is going to start off again with a Temple Garden into Champion of the Parish. So a good start here from him. We'll see if he can take advantage of it as Eric does take his draw step. And we'll see if he does have an Arbor Elf. And he has a Blood Crypt here, so we may see a Pillar of Flame or a wow. Tragic Slip. So Tragic Slip going to take care of it. it. Looks like he's got, Eric's got a handful of removal. Yeah, I see at least um, so a, I see a Mizzy and Mortars over there as he's well. He's got the he's got the perfect draw um, to stave off Thomas's early assault and hope to get to uh, a Thrag Tusk. But it does look like Thomas has a Thalia, which um, would be pretty good right here. We'll see a Cavern of Souls. That's going to name human, and we are going to we'll see Burning Tree emissary in the Flint of Four. So he, I, he chose to get those. Uh, hmm. Interesting. Uh, I thought he had a Thalia. I wonder if he just chose to not play it and play it on turn three instead. Well, I believe his hand right now, I know he has a Stomping Grounds. So he does have that Thalia that you did see, as we're going to see Mizzy and Mortars take care of the Flint Hook for. And I believe he also has a Champion of the Parish in his hand as well. So, you know, it, it's interesting to see how his sequencing works out, as he does take a, he does draw, excuse me, a Frontline Medic. You're going to see the Stomping Ground come into play untapped. Thomas is going to move down to 16, and we'll see what card he chooses to play this turn. And it is going to be a Champion of the Parish. And now you are going to see a Thalia. Moving the Champion of the Parish up to a 2-2. Burn Tree Emissary is going to come across for 2 to knock Eric down to 16. And so now he's still, he still does have a pretty good board right now. So. Yeah, but the thing is that had he played the Thalia on turn 2, he basically shuts Eric's turn 2 off. Because sure. Eric doesn't have a 1-drop. So he turns it off. And then the next turn, he just plays the Emissary and Flintifor. And he activates the Flintifor's uh, haste ability. So he deals 5 on turn 3. So he effectively has the same amount of creatures in play, but he deals five instead of two. Sure. Um, so uh, I kind of, um, it would be interesting to see if, if it matters or if uh, Eric is able, if the Thalia is just too good. Um, he kind of baited uh, the Mizia Mortars last turn, but I think uh, Eric still has a um, abrupt decay as, a, as an answer to Thalia anyway. And you see Eric thinking pretty hard here. So he does have a Lily on the veil in his hand that he cannot cast right now. You see Stomping Ground in his hand as well. And he's going to have to play the untap to be able to actually cast that Abrupt Decay that you saw, that, that you brought up. And Abrupt Decay is going to take care of the champion of the Parish right away. So he had to take two damage to even be able to do that, which is ideal, obviously, if you're Thomas yeah. in the situation. Part of the cost 
that goes along with this mana base is that you, know, you do have to pay two life sometimes when you don't want to. Tom is going to come across here for four. And we'll see a follow up here. It's going to be Burning Tree Emissary in the front line, pretty Maddox. So that's a pretty good turn. Bonfire turned off now for Eric because Eric does draw another stomping ground here. And again, this might be a situation where he might have to play one of those Ravnica duels untapped to be able to do what he wants to do. Yeah. And not only, you know, one thing to keep in mind here is not only is Thalia making Liliana Veil like a pretty poor card, as you do see him play a Kessick Wolf run and actually cast it, but again, he can sack any of these guys. I don't think he cares which one he sacrifices. He sacrifices Burning Tree Emissary and just passes the turn back. And now he probably uses a packed Eric, doesn't even care about Liliana. Yeah, Liliana has no effect right now. Discarding a card doesn't really matter at all. The He'd Thalia's, rather have Eric discard a card anyway. Absolutely. <laughs> Comes across here for seven. Going to knock Eric down to three, and we'll see what Thomas draws because he's going to play it no matter what it is. Yeah. This is Liliana, and it is just a Sun Petal Grove and passes the turn back. So what can Eric do to get himself out of this situation? He takes a draw. You see Stomping Ground move to the front. You know he has a Bonfire the Damned in his hand as well. Last two cards are a mystery, but it looks like he does have something because I think he would have conceded if he didn't. So we'll see. Not necessarily. Could be slow rolling concession. But, uh, yeah, stop it around, Bonfire, takes two, Bonfire. All right, Thrax. Thrax us. So he's going to move up to six. Yeah, so, again, the frontline medic is still going to allow Thomas to attack through it. Um, doesn't care so much. Does he draw, is he going to draw Boros Charm to sort of seal things up? Giant Boros, anything. Mayor of Avril. Oh. And and is that enough? That's a wrap. it is. Yep. Yes. He can get in front of the frontline medic, the other guys will do six points of damage, and that'll be it. So Thomas Johnson does win game two, and you see just how important it is to be on the play. But another thing you also see there, Osip, is that on turn one, Eric had to play a Blood Crypt untapped to try to set the Chamber of the Fairies. That's two. And then on turn three, he had to play a Stomping Ground untapped to be able to abrupt decay the other Chamber of the Fairies. So that's two as well. So he actually had to deal himself four points of damage, and that ends up mattering quite a yep. bit. And yeah, like you said, it's the price you pay for good mana, but... Um I think uh, with cards like Thraktos, Huntmaster, he doesn't care as much. It's just in this matchup, it just happens to really uh, come back and bite you sometimes. Yeah. And you know, 90% of the matchups that you play in this format, that again, as you said, that doesn't really matter all that much because you can just recoup the life game, which is again one of the reasons that this deck does play Underworld Connections because it doesn't really mind you know dealing itself damage. But in this one matchup, where he does have, taking a look at his deck list, four copies of Overgrown Tomb. Four copies of Blood Crypt, four copies of Stomping Ground, that can come back to bite you yeah. in a big way. You know, he did have some other lands, you know, the M the M twelve lands as people like to call them, where you know it's contention on what other lands you have. You know, he does have a lot of those as well, but he needs to draw, you know, maybe one Ravnica duel and then the, a lot more of those lands to be yeah. able to to be able to win the game. But this this matchup also does feel like it is a little bit dependent on, you know, who's on the play and who's on the draw. The games are wildly different. Yeah, because Thalia is obviously amazing on the play. Yeah. Um, but on the draw, you know, Eric has um, a little more uh, flexibility there in terms of how he's going to deal with it. Um, he could, he, you know, he could just ignore it and play a Huntmaster. Um, and then, you know, if Thomas doesn't have an answer, uh, he could just pass the turn and let the Huntmaster flip and kill it um, on Thomas's upkeep. Yep. Um, and use like an instant speed removal spell like Tragic Slip or Murder to sort of kill another creature. So, uh, yeah, Th Thalia I think was great that game, uh, but when you're on the draw, it's still going to be good. It's still a card that he definitely wants, but not being able to turn off Farseek is, uh, is a pretty big deal. And when you're Thomas and you look at an opening hand that has a Thalia in it and maybe two lands to be able to cast it, I think that's all, all, almost certainly a keep. You know, it's one of the cards that you're looking for when you're on the play in a sideboard game. And it can kind of influence your decision on what hand you want to keep. You know, I'm on the play, I've got value against this Jun deck, awesome. I'm going to keep, you know, hopefully the rest of my hand comes together. When you're on the draw, you might have to change your line of thinking a little bit because it is substantially worse in the draw than it is on the play. Yeah, I think, I don't think Thomas wants to keep a hand without a, a one drop, like Experiment One or, or um, Champion of Parish. Um, maybe if it's like got a Thalia, a Frontline Medic, and like a Boros Charm, maybe he can think about keeping that. But... In general, it's, if you're on the draw, I think you really want to try to get one of your one drops to have a chance. So we are underway here game three. Both players have kept their seven. Eric does have a stomping ground. He's going to play tapped. And Thomas again with a turn one Temple Garden into Champion of the Parish, bringing himself down to 18. We'll see if Eric has a far seek this game. 
Or he's just going to play straight up, and we're going to see Tragic Slip again take care of the champion. All right, so Burning Tree Emissary or no? <laughs> well, he's had it the first two games, and you see one in his hand. Game this one. one as well. Does he Does he have you know, a, a strong like turn got two? A, he has a reasonably strong turn two. Looks like he has a, <laughs> well, looks like he has a boar there, Looks too. like he's got a couple of them in there. <laughs> it does feel a lot like Frogmite, doesn't yeah. it? Burning Tree Emissary. Burning, Burning Tree Emissary. And a Flint of Four. Is that a Flint of Four? Yeah, all right. Is that a Flint of Four or Mayor? I think uh, it's a Flint of Four. I believe that is a Flint of Four. A little bit of glare here. So you see Eric putting oh, over wow. two minute play tap no with the Sago. And Thomas has a Rampager too, which is great in this matchup. There's a Sacred Foundry. And there's, there's your Mayor of Averbrook. And here's your beatdowns. Nine on turn three sounds reasonable. <laughs> so. What can Eric do here? He has a Hunt Master in his hand and Olivia. Didn't top deck a bonfire. Dragon Skull Summit is the draw for this turn. Yeah, so short of a removal spell. Is it, oh, I think he has. He does have a bonfire in his hand. He can cast it for one, but he has to just get the Hunt Master out there, go up to 13, and try to block. Yeah, looks like Hunt Master turn. might be on chump duty. But the problem is that we know Thomas is a Rampager, so he's going to be getting through for a lot. He's attacking with everything. Um, Thomas is going to take a draw. Not quite sure what he drew that turn. I think there's a frontline medic looming in his hand, but the card that is of the utmost importance right now is Gore Clan Rampager. Not a card that he's going to cast, but well, it is a card that he's going to blood rush. That's the great thing is that he can actually attack with all of his creatures. Eric probably tries to block the mayor. Um, he, he might try to double block the mayor playing around uh, over, uh, Giant Growth, yep. but he doesn't know about the Rampager. And Giant Growth is a card that he did see game one exactly at the so. back end of it, and it's a card that were three copies of that in Nico's deck list that he won Quebec with, so it's easier to play around that card than it is to play around Gore Clan Rampager. Yeah, unless he reads him, he might just try to double block or... Um, no, he just so he just single blocks. Um, Rampager might come down here, and you know the really interesting thing here is is that because Rampager he's evoke he's using the ability, he actually isn't casting a spell this turn, which means that on Eric's upkeep the mayor could flip. Yep. Which is you know, it's good, kind of good, but it also it reduces the number of uh, pump that he has available. So. Eric can actually play a land and cast Bonfire for two, killing off two of the creatures. But um, unfortunately, but he's at four. He's at four, so yeah. uh, not much he can do right now. And you can just feel in this matchup, this is, you know, the thing about Bonfire the Damage is that it's such a, such a powerful card when in the perfect situation. When you miracle it. Yeah, but you know, it's there are situations like last turn where if he would have miracled it, it would have been good enough. Yeah. You know, whereas this turn, this is the turn no, where No, no, it, it would have been, it would have been fine last turn. It would have been because okay. It, no, because he would have killed everything. He would have been able to do it for three. And the he would have killed 